proud to be sponsored by Diamond Bright, the car care products that have been keeping the furious fleet looking their best for a long time already. To find all you need to keep your car clean and protected, follow the link below to diamondbright.co.uk. Hello, welcome to Furious Driving, and today we're at the Kilks Cafe Furious Driving Social, where we've got a few cars have come along to say hello. So we'll start off with our own Ford Crown Victoria, which came out from Kent, 140 or so miles up to Kinnerton, not far from, just around the corner from the Gaydon British Motor Museum. Oh, as always, this is lovely to be cruising on the motorway in. We've got all of our t-shirts, hats, mugs, Furious Junior doing the business on the till there. We're even doing a bit of Dumb and bright stuff today. Anyway, let's have a look at the cars that have arrived. So you might recognise this little uh, Corsa from um, a recent review of it. Still looking absolutely fantastic. A few people mentioned there's a little rattle from the engine, which has now been resolved. It wasn't anything serious, thankfully. It's also now got the auto car magazine from when this was sneak photoed. So that's lovely to see that one crossing the country to come and say hello. Also coming a bit away away is Joseph Lloyd from Lloyd's Vehicle Consulting. He's brought along his V6 Rover 45, which we also reviewed on the channel as well. Full leather, lots of luxury, same wheels as the Tomcat in fact. Another early riser today was this Volvo V70, which is a T5. Fast and practical. He's actually camping in the thing. Who needs a tent? Breakfast has been served. <laughs> so this is incredible. This is exciting. And next to a car we actually used to have at home ourselves, Alpha 147. Mrs. Furious had one of these as her everyday car for a, quite a lot of years actually. Is that open now? Go open that. These seats are possibly the nicest seats of any car you will ever sit in. Which is a blessing and a curse because so many of these and the 156s just get broken so people can make sofas out of their chairs. But ever since she's had that, or sold that car many years ago, every time she gets a new car, it's always compared to the 147, which was a two litre T-Spark like this, and it's always compared unfavorably. Not as fast, not as comfortable. So yeah, a brilliant, brilliant car, which until very recently, you still saw absolutely everywhere. It's only when they hit about 15 years old, they suddenly started to vanish. We've got an alpha friend for it. This is a 166, which you might recognize when we did the 200 VI. This was lurking on the drive because uh, Mr. Coleman of uh, the Rubbish Mechanic YouTube channel was helping me out with the 200 VI head gasket. He's not actually a rubbish mechanic. He's actually a very highly skilled master technician, or master mechanic. Uh, who works on truck bin lorries, hence the, uh, the pun. This is a two litre twin spark, so actually the same engine in both of these cars. Again, astonishingly comfortable seats. Now, he owned the V6 powered um, 166, which we reviewed a few years ago. Um, I might need to come up and drive this one soon actually as well. But another amazing little car that's turned up is this Astra, which is an R plate. A beautiful aquamarine metallic turquoisey colour, looks beautiful. The interior is virtually immaculate, and that's because it's only got 23 and a half thousand miles on it. And the owner of this car is the gentleman who bought Quentin the Rover 200, uh, boom, by the beginning of the year. Unfortunately, he had a, an issue with his left foot uh, playing up, so he had to go and get rid of that car to a new owner and replace it with something automatic, um, which is why he's you now got this absolutely Peach, it was absolute peach of an Astra. 1.6, 16 valve, original dealer number plates. What a thing. He doesn't live anywhere near me, but I think I need to go and visit him and take a drive of this thing very soon. Ah, this is probably the first car to arrive actually, I think. This little Polo. A nice bread van on an L plate, that's what, 1993? very nice. Always get the uh, typical Volkswagen heavily patterned fabric. That's quite a cool car there, I rather like that. And this just arrived a minute ago.
I always get Sinclair C5 envy when I see a working Sinclair C5. This one rolled into the car park, is driven all the way from Liverpool in it, which may or may not be true. So this is very, very tidy and actually works, which is, is good. <laughs> now this, another late arrival, is an amazingly nice Saab 900S. We've got some really nice cars turned up today. This belonged to apparently British American Tobacco as a company car for its first three or four years. Then the salesman who drove it bought it from the lease company because he liked it so much. And when he moved it on, he sold it to someone else in the office. So it stayed with the same group of people for a very long time. And it is immaculate. This is on the Saab stand at the last NEC and we'll be at the next NEC show as well, apparently. That is just absolutely spotless. I love the windscreens on these. It is like an aircraft, as they made much of in their marketing. Uh, two more cars turned up, which matched rather nicely in terms of colour and slightly in terms of style. First of all, we have a Proton. Another Proton. Yeah, you did lose a hubcap uh, earlier. Um, you see the remains of the old one just sitting just there. But they're very hard to find. He's trying to find one quite urgently to, to replace that. So this is a 1.5 SE Proton Automatic. This was on Lloyd's Vehicle Consulting Channel as a review not so long ago. These are woefully underrated because they're really good cars. They just do not break. They drive on and on and on forever. Becoming desirable now that there are none left, which is always the way. Likewise, the Fiat Tempra. We reviewed that red estate car about two years ago now, I think it must have been. But this is a saloon, this is a 1.8 IE, so it's quite a rapid one. It's a manual. I forgot you had to push the button on these, you don't just pull. It's not had the recall, so you can actually cut your own arm off with the ignition off. <laughs> but this is another beautiful car with that amazing stacked decked uh, dashboard, which you may recall from the video of the estate car. It really is quite unique and really futuristic from a future that didn't quite happen. Heavy tweed seats, five-speed manual, lots of buttons. So you've got four window buttons in the centre, then you've got four window buttons on the side, then you've got the passenger window buttons, all electronic dashboard, electric sunroof. What a cool thing. Wow, this is a full old package of cars in this fairly tight space over here. We've got another one over here in the form of, what is this, a Triumph? There's a Spitfire, isn't it? Wow. You see the uh, undercoated bonnet, you're thinking, oh, maybe it's nothing special, but look at this engine, this is something special. This is clearly a car that's been or being restored to a very nice standard as well. Got the twin carbs over there, twin SUs by the look of it. Everything, everything looks brand new under this bonnet. This is really nice. Oh, new, new interior as well, new carpets, new seats. Absolutely lovely. Very nice indeed. Oh, even got the uh, Dunlop De Novo alloys. I believe this Honda is also a subscriber. And three more interesting vehicles in the car park to have a quick look at and everything else is parked across the road apparently. It's got a 75 station wagon, a Touring. Lovely, comfortable seats in those things. The retro dials on the dashboard. Recognise that badge. I need to sell them a Furious Drive one to go alongside that. CDTI, so it's a diesel. Okay, yeah. Very practical load lugging there. Then we've got a Honda Civic. It's got a VTEC Yo. 1.6 VTI. This is quite nicely done. Very subtly modified. Got very low stance. A Momo wheel. Your metal ball topped gear shifter a cool looking car these are another car that's going to really come into its own in the last couple of years after not really being appreciated for far too long and finally we have a jag it's sumptuous leather and it's wooden rimmed wheel the owner did sadly leave his wallet behind and so we had to buy him breakfast a lovely car You may have the wrong badge on that though. 
Right. See what, anything else we can find. I can't go this entire day without mentioning the venue, Gilks Garage Cafe, which has been in the Gilks family for I think like a hundred years or something. It actually was a garage for a long time, but now it is an eating establishment and the food here is amazing. I have to say the pancakes and bacon for breakfast is fantastic and they do a lovely cup of coffee as well. But this is the cafe itself, Roots Group locally sourced sofaage. And artist Ian Cook, who we've mentioned on the channel a couple of times, even interviewed him, is a regular. Sorry. <laughs> has cartooned their own van, and the regulars here get their own car as a mug. Amazing. Definitely worth a visit in your fear in the area. A few more cars have turned up in the car park while we've been talking, and this one is particularly interesting in red. It's one of probably five left in the country, a Vorts or Vortos Mini, which is a, a development of a, a Cooper, effectively. Um, done by a guy called Nick Vaught back in the, uh, in the 60s. This has got a Downton head on it, twin carbs, rather nice little, very, very small mini light wheels, beautiful interior, really, really nice car. Hopefully we'll come across and see more of this car in more detail in the near future. Crossing and past this rather nice Jaguar just here, which we've seen already, I've got an MGF. I do like an MGF mid-engine balance, nice interior. What's well, nothing, nothing not to like. Perfect soundtrack for driving in this with the roof down. Cool cars, very underrated. I should probably add one to the collection at some point. I nearly have a couple of times as it goes. And this, heard this one coming an absolute mile off. RS4, I don't know if it's got standard exhausts on it or not. I love the color on this. I don't know if that's a standard exhaust or not, but they are very, very, very loud indeed. And very, very pleasing on the ear if you like the sound of a big exhaust. And it's a manual, fantastic. I missed what that was that went past in. It sounded good though. Another MG, a B this time. <laughs> Someone has now stolen, the Saab owner has stolen the Sinclair C5. The green B, Molly the MG BGT on Instagram if you're interested. Looking very nice, nice tan interior, caramel. Wooden steering wheel, all the good MG stuff. Webasto roof, lovely. Oh, I like this. There we go. We've now got a fully rebuilt, refreshed engine, giving the car a whole new feel of alive and freshness and newly rebuiltness. <laughs> Had a quick look at this little Citroen here. Mr. Lloyd of Joseph Lloyd Vehicle Consulting is stealing the owner's details. This is just, doing some research, sir. just some research, the Zara VTS, uh, which is, I've got to, it's got to be one of only a half a dozen left in the country. There's not, there's not many Except, exceptionally rare. Yeah, I don't remember the last time I saw a Zara VTS. Is it open? Yeah. Oh, look, we've got Alcantara. He's excited too. Oh, check out, about it. check out this bad boy. Pretend carbon fiber-ish stuff. Oh, here we go. So French. French performance at its best. What year is this car? 2001, so it's basically a 90s car. 90s cars are just peak car, as I said before. Pretty much, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. A pretty 306, although well, the 306s are pretty pretty as it goes anyway. Well, believe it or not, the Astra is actually running. It's just heading home right now. We can barely hear the thing ticking over. It's so smooth, it's amazing. We've had another car arrive in the last few minutes. It's beautiful Alpha 156. Lovely condition. I love the door handles, the solid aluminium, cast aluminium with a push button on it and the hidden rear door handles. So it's been handed the keys. This is a two litre JTS. Let's have a little listen to this because it's a wizard exhaust apparently. love the sound of a T-Spark just cranking over. Oh, that sounds nice, doesn't it? Look at this interior, I need another 156. They are such pretty cars. This interior is amazing. That's a nice cracking burble, isn't it? Suddenly I want another 156, even more than I did before. Ah, there's that Triumph coming back. Oh, 
the battle of the exhaust notes. All the burbling, fantastic. Well, something has just turned up which is rather interesting and hilarious, the size comparison. About the size of the Crown Vic bonnet, it's this little 500. Pretty, pretty car. Really unassuming colour, but suits it perfectly. We've got the tiny little mustachio grille, the tiny Italian number plates, white wall tyres and left-hand drive. That interior is a beautiful colour. Condition of this thing is amazing. No over 500. Chinka chinka. Oh, I guess it's a regular here, but with a gilt sticker in the back. What a pretty little thing. I'm glad this car turned up last minute. I was just about to start packing things away and watch it roll in. This little fella. How nice is that? I think I saw a Mustang turn up a second ago as well. Well, the front car park is ever changing. Every time I step outside, there's more cars. This time, we had a complete change around. The MG's moved over there, but we've gained an X350 who is currently watching TV in the back of the car because why wouldn't you? <laughs> very, very, very comfy luxury car. Less comfy, but probably faster. We've got a 5.0 Mustang full bumblebee spec. Yes, I know that's a Chevy Camaro or technically a Volkswagen Beetle. Goodbye to the MG, by the way. And these guys will be on the uh, young, whatever it's called, young retro club stand at the NEC next month. So the Mustang 5 litre looking awesome. That's not the same Lloyd as Joseph around the corner. And a V8, I'm guessing. <laughs> Spider Ferrari. I suspect these guys are not here for the furious meeting. They've not come to say hello if they have. Yeah, if you're a fan of stickers, this is a full set here. Motorist, Planet Auto, Took, Hubnut, Furious Driving Internal, T-Shelf, External, Hubnut, Lloyd's Vehicle Consulting, the, the big Furious Driving one. That's available for a bubble. I drive a classic, more Lloyds, more Hubnut, more Motorist. Excellent sticker collection just there. Now you know I love a Suzuki Alto. You may remember seeing the review of one a, a year or so ago, the little silver one. This has got all the modifications on it, like the, the big chin spoiler, that extra antenna or parking finder. What a cool thing. Suzuki Fronte, wind deflectors, small dog, everything, you name it. What a cool, cool car. Massive fan of the Alto. This is about 1980-ish, 81, I guess, for an X-plate. What a cool machine. Oh, it's even got the Japanese-style aftermarket gear knob, which has got flowers in the resin. What a great car. This has been an amazing turnout of vehicles. No idea what was going to turn up to this event, but it's been such a mad combination. Oh, my goodness, two more, I didn't say. <laughs> Tucked up in the corner, which I missed earlier, another MGB, white and red, perfect colour combination as I always say. Wire wheel, chrome bumper, what year is this one? Uh, D plates, that's what, 67 or something? Pretty, pretty, pretty car. And over there, oh come on, how good is that? A Hunter GLS with hull bay. Wow. Proper muscle car in its day. Really rare thing these days, but wow, what a thing. Planet Rock. Listen to that a lot recently, actually. Nice seats in this, clearly re-upholstered, or possibly changed for something completely different. Oh, look at that dashboard with the angled, I'll try and zoom in in the edit, those angled towards the driver dials. So, so, so cool. What a thing. I'm glad I noticed this. Wow, one more thing we couldn't leave without seeing is the cafe's own Comma Cobb, an Ordax uh, Hillman based van. Comma badged, useful size in there. Love that. Old commercials just don't survive, they get used to death. That is the authentic sound of a comma cob idling behind you. It's a Mustang. The 
and the last car to roll into the car park is a Micra. So we had a real variety of cars turning up today. There was more in the field across the road, but it's too far away to walk to when there's stuff going on over here. So thank you to everyone who turned up today here at Kinnerton in, uh, in Warwickshire, Gilks Cafe Garage, Garage Cafe, um, at the Furious Driving Social. First one here, it's been great fun, so I'm sure there'll be more in the future. Thank you for watching, thank you for coming. And next time that will be at the NEC, so come and say hello to me and Ian Hubnut over at the NEC in November. Thank you for watching and goodbye.